Right now you can find reels and Instagram stories, like people with these cooking, these uh, pound cakes, whatever, right? So just think back when I was growing up, uh, television shut off. You got them little lines on there with the boo. You got that, right? Okay, so then cable came out. And at that point, cable, whatever channel you were watching, everybody in the house had to watch the same channel because it wouldn't flip over. Then they invented that. There was a point in time where you didn't see two people laying in the bed together. You watched Lever to Beaver, the mama head of bed, the daddy head of bed, that type thing. Slowly but surely, all of these things were introduced. Now, you can turn the television on, there's a murder. Frederick and I talk about, oh my God, everybody doing headshots now. Strange busting up, right? That's become our new norm. So now when someone does something, you know, no big deal. Well, that's how it, to me, has come across with food. Because I've watched someone mix marshmallows, payroll syrup, and regular sugar. Wait a minute, what? What was this? I can't even tell you what it was making. And now the new TikTok thing, they're showing you how to take the sugar and make an instant candy and then dip the grape in it, put it in the freezer. And you know, all of these different things. So they're taking the good fruit and doing something there. And now it has become normal. Mm -hmm. So when we come along and say, well, you feel that way because of this. What do you mean? Do you know how many people out here are showing these videos, are doing this? Well, I was getting ready to say something, but this is being recorded and uh, <laughs> might not cut that part. Out. <laughs> so I'm going to stop. <laughs> but because we keep seeing it, it becomes our new normal. Yeah. Welcome to the Plant Free MD Podcast with Dr. Anthony Chafee, where we discuss diet and nutrition and how this affects health and chronic disease, and show you how you can use this to optimize your health and happiness, both mentally and physically. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, for another episode of the Plant Free MD Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Anthony Chafee, and today I have a very special guest, Miss uh, Giselle Brown from Hanging with the Browns. Giselle, thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure to meet you on your live and you had me on as a guest, and it's great to have you on as my guest. So thank you for coming. Yes, yes, yes. I am super, super excited. And because I'm a chatter, that's why he's not here. He's like, no, you and Dr. Chafee have it this morning because <laughs> I got girly stuff. Uh, I will tell the audience, listen, I asked him prior to mm. like, where's the line? Because I have female questions and he's <laughs> never been a girl. So let's yeah. see. That's a, that's okay. So um, for people who haven't come across you before, can you tell us uh, a bit about yourself and, and uh, what you do with your channel? Oh, most definitely. So uh, I tell people that my husband has a PhD from YouTube University. Mm -hmm. So that means he supported everybody's channel. And then when we found out about the carnivore diet, it had to do with, uh, and all this is on our channel. My husband was actually January of last year. He was on a walker, literally. Uh, well, we're going to say it was a severe case of gout, but his uric acid wasn't really high. He, he mm -hmm. couldn't walk. Uh, and I captured him going across uh, on a walker. It was my mom's walker. And yeah, it, it, it wasn't well for him. Bottom line is we decided to cut everything out of his diet. I am a food manipulator. I was a vegan at the time. Mm. And um, what I, what we did was we cut him, it was six weeks of nothing but chicken Caesar salad. Mm. Well, it ended up being, of course, the dressing the dressing and, 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 and sometimes lettuce set him off because he also doesn't have a gallbladder. Mm. So with all of this, and, uh, he just turned 60 in December, I turned 60 in July. And so we have all of this plan. And now all of a sudden I see myself going to pick out an electric wheelchair because we didn't know what was doing. The medication wasn't working, just nothing. We were introduced, uh, my brother that you briefly met on the show, he watched you and well, someone introduced him. He saw you 
he started, he came and started telling us about you. And my husband started the carnivore diet that day. Nice. He said, I'm in so much agony. So there was no research, no nothing. He was like, I have to do it. And within a week, because we had cut out everything, we started noticing the pain level and everything going down. Two days after he started, I switched. Mm -hmm. Because I saw happiness on his face. I saw where he felt like something great was coming from this and I wasn't going to let him do it without me. Mm -hmm. And so I never thought, Dr. Chafee, that my symptoms that I had were going to change. I I was looking, maybe I dropped a couple of pounds, something like that, you know, they, but everything turned around, fibromyalgia. Um, oh my God, my I had two bulging discs that they wanted to fuse my back on two separate occasions. That's how bad it was. And I tell people I was three years on Percocets. Uh, not the low dose either. And uh, where I was supposed to actually take them throughout the day, I normally would like take one and save three for the night mm. because going to bed was horrific. And it, uh, we have a sleep number and I used to have it down to like a 20 where the bed felt like a bowl, literally. Mm. So I could lay in it and, and then have my back compressed this way that relieved the pressure in the back. Because if you did this, it's like it pinched the disc bulging out. Mm. And so I slept like this. When I would wake up, it's like, I guess now I understand all the inflammation was in the body, everything. And so what I used to have to do, literally, I would grab the sheet take this hand and go across, grab the sheet and then rock and pull because I had to get on my stomach to get out of bed. There was no sit up and get out of bed. And if I rolled, I might fall on the floor. So I had to turn and then I would push my way back, get my feet planted and then that rise. I was too young for how I was doing, but I didn't think the carnivore diet would reverse that. Oh, now I just turned my first cartwheel last week because yeah. <clears throat> I said I was going to do it before uh, 60. Well, I wanted to do it by my 60th birthday. Your girl turned a cartwheel, baby. <laughs> nice. I didn't know the carnivore diet was going to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. And you, you you know, I mean, just, just having that, that amount of back pain, that amount of the chronic pain, fibromyalgia, where you were on that amount of heavy opioids, that's, yep. uh, that's obviously very difficult to come off. Most people don't come off. They just go on more and more and more. Uh, fibromyalgia is one of those things that, that, uh, that some doctors will say like, well, okay, look, we don't, we don't know why it's causing it, but there's just some sort of global pain experience. And we sort of give it this name fibromyalgia. But we don't really know what causes it, but it does seem to get better when you reduce inflammation and you reduce these things out of your diet. And then it helps the other sorts of pain, uh, areas of pain in the body as well. And it's something that I've heard, uh, again and again and again, where people are saying, I've been on Percocets. I've been on all these sorts of things, these oxys and so on for years. And then all of a sudden I changed my diet and this stuff goes away. It's pretty amazing. Well, let me just add to that. So my pain regiment, I, I guess I can see it now because I'm not on it. My pain <laughs> regimen is I used to uh, go to the uh, CBD store and they would have Delta 8 or some type of, because uh, I asked you about cannabis last time. Uh, well, I, I said THC is how mm -hmm. I said it. Mm -hmm. And I came home and I made um, edibles. Mm -hmm. So when I say to you, knock myself out at night, that's how mm -hmm. bad the pain was. So it would start with a half a glass of wine and an edible. Mm -hmm. And then I would take the Percocets and, to knock me out. Yeah. Because that moment laying in bed was, it, it was, it was, it was bad. And so laying there, I, I literally needed to numb my senses. 
Well, I kept seeing these commercials about the damage that Percocet does. And I used to have my kit and my liver and all this other stuff uh, done. I used to have drug tests every, uh, no, that was uh, beforehand. Because once I started the edibles, I could not do the two because they did drug test me. Mm. Uh, and so I didn't, I like that feeling either going in, having to uh, make it, I guess that was their way of, you know, making sure you didn't do other things. And I did, but then I realized that I can't continue this and break body organs down. It took me three days to knock everything clean out. Yeah. Well. What did that in hit entail? That entailed me in the middle of the night walking around the house sometime one or two hours. And I did mm. this over and over. I changed directions. I changed direct, And I used to fall asleep on the sofa. Mm. And then uh, in about, like I said, three days, I was fine. There was like no throwing up. There was no sweats. There was no, it was just agony. Mm. And then there you go. And so oh. that's, that's out of my life. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of people. But I still miss. I, I miss the edibles. Yeah, <laughs> being truthful. No, not the cookie itself. Just the you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because you can't drink wine. There's so much now that you can't uh, do mm -hmm. on the carnivore diet. That mm -hmm. I do miss that. So when I travel. I will mm -hmm. have an espresso martini. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, sometimes you, yeah, yeah, you want to treat yourself. I, um, you know, I uh, occasionally would drink. I mean, it's like once every two years. I think the last time I drank was like two years ago. Um, you know, some, but you know, I, I don't feel my best for like a month after that. It's like like three months. I'm just sort of lower energy and just feeling a bit crummy. And so something has to be pretty, you know, pretty special occasion for me to to want to bung up the next three weeks of my life so it's uh and i always i know i always regret it <laughs> you do because yeah. i i will say uh my husband and i did a show and i literally uh felt 33 on the inside i when, when i would just think back that was like a comfortable time for my mental clarity and everything he was like really i say yes but i will say this i had never cheated well, we just use the word cheated mm -hmm. um, in regards to the carnivore diet. We went on a uh, cruise and and I still haven't cheated in regards to food except mm -hmm. uh, jalapeno peppers. I still mm -hmm. eat those. Mm -hmm. I know. I just like jalapeno peppers. Anyway, so I can be on a cruise ship. I don't venture off. No cakes, no bread. None of that means anything to me. But the bartender. It's something in that, in that, and, and by the fact that I had my, uh, surgery, the sleeve intoxication lasts probably 20 minutes. Yeah. So that part, I did not understand at all that I can take six shots. I didn't, but I'm, I have, but mm -hmm. anyway, <laughs> not a good 30, 30 minutes max. I can walk a straight line. I can, uh, I can drive. I can do everything as if I, I feel like right now. So mm -hmm. I, we never understood that. And so something about the alcohol, I guess being absorbed with the stomach, but I don't have a big stomach. So only, I don't, I don't understand it, but that's my, yeah. it doesn't last. So yeah, yeah. This is really... that's another jacked up part. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I... I, I, I sort of experienced that same thing. Um, just naturally, I've always had a very high tolerance for alcohol and things like that. And so even when well, I, I even rarely drank, I stopped drinking during the rugby season when I was 21, I sort of, you know, had fake ID and things like that. My rugby team would sneak me into bars and things like that. And we, you know, travel overseas. So I'd be legal over there anyway. And so I was just used to, to going in there. And then I turned 21 and I remember, going on this sort of big like 21 run and then i was at this bar in in uh, kirkland where i grew up and walked in there and it uh it was just like i was like wow hey i'm allowed to go in here for the first time like this is great and all of a sudden i just realized like i've been coming here for three years like 
<laughs> what, what am I getting excited about? And instantly the thrill was gone. I was just over it. I was just completely over the whole bar scene. And I was just like, all right, this is stupid. And um, then I got sick that month, just uh, had pneumonia and I had to take medications for it and I couldn't drink on it. And um, so it was like a month I couldn't drink. And, uh, and that was, and I was very used to drinking after games. It was just like once a week. But um, I felt really weird at first, and then the next week, not as weird. And the week after that, didn't feel weird at all. And then after that, I'm like, I actually enjoy this more. I'm like sober. I'm able to talk to people. I can drive home. I'm not wasting a bunch of money. And I, I felt so much better, and my performance was so much better. It's like, yeah, I'm just not mm -hmm. going to do this anymore. So I just stopped during right. the season. But then it was like two years later, I drank again. That was it. Was two two years before I drank again because I just sort of would play year round, and. It was, um, it, it would still take like 20 drinks to get me buzzed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and like, I, it, I couldn't do it with beer. I could, I just couldn't get drunk with beer unless it was like some crazy, like malt liquor or something like that. Some like 11% craziness, you know, and like, um, uh, like steel reserve was our, our road trip drink. We just go like, <laughs> like borders of steel reserve. And, um, and, uh, and so it was just, that yeah, was the only thing that would work besides like hard alcohol. Um, I just, right. I couldn't drink enough. It was, I would get physically full before I would get drunk. And I'm like, I actually, I don't right. have any more room. And so it was, it was just a bit of a, bit of a waste of time for me, really. You know, I'd have to right. like drink so much just to get barely anything out of it. And like, what is that doing to my body? I'm putting all this poison in my body and for what? It's not even getting me that big of a result. So it was, it just never really, appeal to me all that much and and now too um you know it's even less so because i just you know it's like three weeks before i before i recover before i feel i'm not like hung over but uh, even the next day I'm, no. not hungover. I'm just tired and i'm like just a bit tired for like three weeks and I'm like yeah i just don't like that you know that's one of the things that i did want uh to talk about was mm -hmm. the recovery uh because there are some people that fall off we, we'll use that term and you get back on, but to get to where you were takes a really, really, yeah, your body might, what we call bounce back, but I still feel that optimal, it takes longer than that. And then uh, I'm experiencing a breakout. I've gone to a dermatologist They've done a biopsy and they said it's something that I'm eating. And at that point, I'm like, okay, well, I'm only eating meat. So it was like, what, bacon, mm -hmm. something? I, I don't I don't know what it is and I'm not even trying to, but it is extremely, it, it itches and it's a complete circle. I thought it was a ringworm, mm. but it's not. And then I thought when you cut a piece of my back off that after the test, you were going to tell me, well, it's in this category, but to say it was something that I was eating. So as you get smaller, because I've been hanging in these 140s, uh, I think this morning I was 142. The smallest I've been on carnivore is 140, but I fluctuate now like 140. 145 would be my biggest. And then this 142. So it goes back and forth, whether I eat a lot, a little, eh, eh. but I know the composition of my body is changing. And so mm -hmm. then part of me says, is there something locked away in the fat cells that when that portion is, you know, being taken care of for lack of medical terminology, um, it's releasing something. I don't know. But I don't like, I had a breakout, I think it was last week. Now, I did a fast The one of the times that this happened before, and it didn't happen for months. And I said, hmm, okay, that's good. But a fast is really hard on my body hmm. due to the stomach, due to the acid, due to how things uh, so-called bounce back. But I'm willing to do it because the I don't get hunger signals that portion of my stomach was cut off mm -hmm. so there's there's not a growl 
um, there'll be acid. That's what starts churning. The acid starts churning, and then that's where those these pills come into play to calm it down because there's nothing in it. And then if I try to put something in it, then my burping, burp, burp, gas, burp, gas, and it doesn't matter what I put in it. Yeah. So I feel better if I do small meals and like, and continue, but I have to remember to eat. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like set the clock, set your timer. It's like, start preparing something, start preparing something because you, I don't take in enough food. I know mm -hmm. I don't take in enough food. I know I don't. You guys be talking pounds and say, I, I, two burgers, one here, one there. And maybe, uh, and even if I do an egg, I'll do, I pour some of the yolk, I mean, the white off. I might do three yolks and whatever white, yolk, uh, 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 white was left on the egg when I was doing it, that ends up being it. Hey everyone, really happy to announce a new sponsor for the show and for everybody down in Australia, Stockman Steaks, who are delivering high quality grass fed and finished pasture raised beef and other meats, flash frozen and vacuum sealed to your door. Something that I've been enjoying a lot of myself recently as well. They also have a great range of specialty items such as high fat keto mints and carnivore beef and organs mints with liver, kidneys and beef heart as well. So use code CHAFEE today for a free order of beef mints or another a specialty gift along with your order at stockmansteaks.com.au and I'll see you over there. Thanks guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's not enough food. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we have that gastric sleep. I mean, it just cuts off a big volume of the of the stomach. And so you just you're not gonna be able to fit, physically fit anymore. Um and then you cut off part of the stomach that actually produces a hormone called ghrelin, which is uh, it's triggered by stretch receptors. So if if your stomach is stretched out, it'll release leptin, which is just a tidy hormone, which actually all, mostly comes from your fat cells. And that sort of gives you brain like a running gas gauge on how much energy you have. And that's why you can sort of feel satiated and your body knows, even though you don't have any food in your stomach, your brain's just like, yeah, we're fine. You know, we've got, we've got all this energy available, but that ghrelin, when it's, when it's collapsed, then it's releasing ghrelin. And so that ghrelin is offset by the leptin. If you have more leptin than ghrelin, your brain just goes, yeah, we're fine. Okay. You know, it's not a big deal, but then that, you know, leptin starts coming down a bit and your brain goes, Ooh, wait, no, ghrelin's up, leptin's down. We got to eat, which is a major reason why eating carbohydrates makes you overeat is because, uh, insulin blocks leptin. And mm. so it uh, you don't see that leptin. Now you're only seeing the ghrelin and your brain saying, Ooh, that's, that's a problem. And this is why sugar is even worse because fructose and alcohol, fructose and alcohol will both independently block uh, leptin on its own and fructose and, and alcohol will upregulate ghrelin. So it makes you really feel like you're starving. So you really overeat. And so that's why our hunger signals are very different. Now you've got it compounded because you don't make ghrelin anymore. Mm -hmm. And so while your brain can see it's leptin, it goes like, Ooh, everything's great. And you're not, it's not seeing the counter of the ghrelin so it just thinks that it, your, your hunger is going to be even more subtle. Um, but I think, you know, it's still sort of the same principle, you know, if you eat until things stop tasting good. Um, I can't, well, here's you can't the thing. Get there anyway, because you can't eat enough. Yeah. Very, I was just going to say, so I, I tell my husband, I said, I want another bite. I know I want another bite. But if I put this in my mouth, I'm going to throw it up Yeah, because that's yeah. what because there's this thing called dumping with us. So mm -hmm. here I'll end up eat, and it's like it's so delicious. It's like, oh, my God, this is so good. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking and I'm like, I won't be and the food is cold. Just and, and then I have to go and heat it back up. Yeah, it. I want people to not have this surgery. Mm. I want people to, that is like, that's the reason why we're trying to do that show on Wednesday. It's two people, people that, um, when you're going through the process for gastric, they have you, at least mine did, they have you in a big therapy session. That's what I'm going to call it. You have the doctors there. They're explaining 
everything to you uh, uh, about what's going to happen. And most of the time, people that work in their office have had this surgery. And so all you see as a big person is some small people standing up there. And it's like, oh, my God, mm -hmm. I this is obtainable for me. And it's like, no, because they tell you you need to change how you're eating. They even sent me to a nutritionist to say how to eat. She had the little fake food on the plate. And they always say, start with your pro your lean protein first. Mm -hmm. Lean is that word. So of course they throw that dry chicken breast up there and all this, you know, and you can venture off on some other meats, but you know, red meat. And so I'm listening to her, the nutritionist tell me, tell me this. And so I wasn't going to listen to her anyway, because I just felt if I was going to eat smaller meals, I was going to be great anyway. Um, so they have all of this going on. They need to have me there so I can let them know, no, because mm -mm. they're not telling you about the fact that, uh, but I don't know about the bypass people, um, that you won't get these hunger signals and that we can be out and about. And I look at my husband, I say, okay, I'm getting lightheaded. I got to put some, that's how, those are my signals now. Or he will say to me, make sure you put something in your stomach before we leave. Those are the signals now because I could literally, and then if I feel some kind of way, if I drink some water, then my it's, it's, it's like a trickery that, you know, oh, she put something in us. And I can keep going mm -hmm. until I collapse because I literally have no fuel whatsoever. And this I'm talking before carnivore. That's mm -hmm. how that was. Now it's uh, the exhaustion is different. It is it, it's a different. It, it's not like how it was. Uh, I don't feel like I'm gonna pass out. I don't feel any of those things anymore. I just know that I need to eat something. That's mm -hmm. pretty much it now. It's like, oh, you need some fuel. But then if I'm in a fast, mm -hmm. then what? I never get to prime. I never get to do any of those things. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a Anybody who's watching, please yeah. do not do this. Mm. Please. There, I'm, I'm telling you, all you're doing is putting his kids or hers through school help buying a boat, a vacation home, yeah. because what you end up with after. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. I, I can't. Yeah. It's, I it's, can't it's, reverse it. Yeah. It, well, exactly. And um, I'm glad that, that you're, you know, you're telling people this because I, I totally agree with you. I think that that's one of the worst surgeries out there. And, um, you know, as people are, are sort of in a state of desperation, they're trying everything and anything, and it's just not working. So they, okay, I have to do this. You know, we're talking about leptin, you can measure leptin. <clears throat> if that's elevated, because you've been eating a lot of sugar and carbs and doing these yo yo diets and starvation diets, and all these sorts of things it, that leptin starts creeping up, it's called leptin resistance. And the higher that gets, the harder it is to lose weight. And if that gets over a hundred, a lot of bariatric surgeons will tell you, you can't lose weight without bariatric surgery. It won't happen. It can happen. It's just, you have to be, you have to do beyond the, you have to eat the right way. And so I put people right. on more diet, leptin comes right down and they don't lose weight right away because that leptin needs to come down enough. Uh, but once it does, then they start losing weight. I actually had a lady, she hasn't been able to lose weight at all. She's in her sixties. And a very sweet lady, but uh, has always struggled with her weight. Nothing has ever worked for her. And she was actually in tears the last time she she came in. Um, and I, she, I, she understood. I showed her leptin and said, look, this is, this is going to be your situation. It will work. It will come down. But that when that leptin comes down, that's when you're going to really start seeing results. And so every month she was losing, you know, few pounds, you know, four or five pounds, not, not, not a huge amount, but you know, a couple pounds here and there. And then it was steady. And she was just like, look, you know, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling better. You explain this to me and you know, that's fine. And I'm, I'm doing a lot better. I'm coming off medications. I have more energy, you know, so I'm fine. And then it was a few pounds, a few pounds, a few pounds, a few pounds. And all of a sudden, bam, uh, 30 pounds. It's just like, bam. Mm. yeah. And, um, and she just was 
just beaming, you know, and she felt so much better. She, and she was in tears because she's like, nothing else has ever worked for me. Nothing else has ever worked. And I just thought, I thought it was never going to go away. And so she was very, very happy. So now we're, um, yeah. So now she's in that stage where she's starting to lose significant. That's, amount of weight. that's remarkable. The smallest I got, uh, well, the largest, I was two sixty, mm. and the, <laughs> right. Mm. Yeah, I know you just really, <laughs> Yeah, what's <laughs> you could just about imagine. And I and I took pictures. I did everything. I did not. My husband said, "Shallow Al," that when I looked inside of the mirror, I didn't see what everybody else saw. I am not kidding. I might, you know, yeah, no, I didn't. But for her, I ended up. I'm I'm glad she didn't go the route that I did because the smallest I got on the gastric was 164. Hmm. And I can tell you that that was 10 years ago because I was approaching my 50th birthday. Mm -hmm. And I said that for my 50th birthday, I wanted to be at least, a I wanted to be 120 pounds. That was my goal after, I've had gastric surgery, so I know that this is going to work. These small portions, and then I'm not hungry, so I can skip a meal. It's like, my body was so jacked up. That is not how we are supposed to eat or live. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. And, and then, okay, so I said birthday. So what was at the birthday? Cake. Uh, and then I was turning 50. For three days, I soaked the fruit in, in, in coconut rum. Mm -hmm. I made jello shots. As a matter of fact, it was adamant that there were no children, uh, uh, no one under the age of 21, because I did not want to be responsible because there was alcohol everywhere and the food was all, pretty much everything was infused. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of party it was. So, you know, the next day I was not 164 pounds. Mm. Hadn't seen it again since then mm. until now. And the carnivore diet got me to that and beyond. And uh, now, like I said, uh, it's here. The damage has been done. I wanted to address uh, this is a side note. Mm -hmm. It took us ladies a long time, because I can't speak for fellas, a long time to gain this weight. We've been eating how we want for a long time. Why are you rushing to get fit in a short period of time and don't want to do the due diligence? Because right now I'm not even talking about exercise. I haven't, I just fixed uh, uh, our little area upstairs to, to go and do. So I did this portion without working out, but I stuck with it. Uh, the longevity for me is what's going to, I can't even imagine. I now see myself at a hundred years old um, and doing well. So it's like, I'm excited about the longevity for me seeing over time, just how great this is doing for me. I always felt that God and jeans was on my side prior to so just imagine, honey, with the inside, you you didn't have to tell me nothing. You almost can't tell me that now. So <laughs> I, I'm like super, super excited. Yeah. About, only problem though, my money got to last longer. That's a well, downside. Well, but also compound interest. You know, you make those investments, you know, look, I'm going to be here for a long time. You know, you make those investments now and then it just, it just That's racks right. up. And you turn it, you get that vampire money where you're around for like hundreds of years and it's just racking up. Yes. Oh, I like that. That vampire money. Go <laughs> ahead, Dr. Taper. I like that money. Yes. I want that. That's what I, that's yeah. what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you okay. know, you're, you're right. You know, the thing is, is that, you know, we, we're doing all these things to try to starve ourselves. We're trying to cut out portions of our stomach, make it impossible to eat food. Like, like food's the enemy. Like food is something that's harming us. Like we're putting this in our body and, and that's what's causing 
harm to us and that's and that's normal because that's the thing it is it is causing harm it is making us sick it is making us overweight it is making us gain weight inappropriate weight and uh, that should tell us everything it should tell us that this is not something that's correct this is not something that's fit for our body it's not fit for human consumption no animal does that no animal has to limit this oh goodness oh gosh i have to i have to oh, oh i gotta be careful you know no koala is just saying that's enough you know it's just their body's telling them what to eat they're eating to satiety and then that and that's it you know and all their natural instincts are coming to bear and that is I mean, there's so many people that try to detract against you know just the natural laws of of the world but it's just like you know it it is an absurd thing to argue against you know we we should be able to listen to our body's instincts the the fact that we can't means that we're doing something wrong and something is influencing that negatively and so you know, we're not designed Listen. to starve, you know, we're not, we're not designed to just not eat. Right. And then that's what we're supposed to do. And that like, we're, we, we get nutrients from not eating and we get harmed by eating. You know, we shouldn't have to starve ourselves. The food we eat should nourish us and only bring benefit. And the fact that it's not that we have to play these games and do these surgeries and starve ourselves and all these sorts of things means that something's very wrong. Well, Dr. Chafee, let's, let's, as you were talking, I was thinking about um, right now you can find reels and Instagram stories, like people with these cooking, uh, um, the these uh, pound cakes, whatever, right? So just think back when I was growing up, uh, television shut off. You got them little lines on there with the boo. You got that, right? Okay, so then cable came out. And at that point, cable, whatever channel you were watching, everybody in the house had to watch the same channel because it wouldn't flip over. Then they invented that. There was a point in time where you didn't see two people laying in the bed together. You watched Lever to mm. Beaver, the mama head of bed, the dead head of bed, that type thing. Mm. Slowly but surely, all of these things were introduced. Now, you can turn the television on, there's a murder. Frederick and I talk about, oh my God, everybody doing headshots now. Strange <laughs> busting out, right? That's become our new normal. Mm -hmm. So now when someone does something, you know, psh, no big deal. Well, that's how it, to me, has come across with food mm -hmm. because I've watched, uh, I've watched uh, 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 someone mix marshmallows, Cairo syrup, and regular sugar. Wait a minute, what? What was this? I can't even tell you what it was making. And now uh, the new TikTok thing, they're showing you how to take the sugar and make an instant candy and then dip the grape in it, put it in the freezer. And, you know, all of these different things. So they're taking the good fruit and doing something. There, and now it has become normal. Mm -hmm. So when we come along and say, well, you feel that way because of this. What do you mean? Do you know how many people out here are showing these videos, are doing this? Well, I was getting ready to say something, but this is being mm -hmm. recorded. And uh, <laughs> I might not cut that part. Out, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> but because we keep seeing it, it becomes our new normal. Yeah. And so it doesn't phase us. Uh, now, I remember Atari... Uh, that that was the video game, and then now, uh, the you know, boop, 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 boop. no big deal. Mm -hmm. That's what we watch, and it becomes part of our normal. Then you have this group of people coming out to say, "Listen, don't eat any of that." But all of these people are eating that. Mm -hmm. It has to be okay. They're releasing this to the public. They're putting it in the grocery stores. It has to be okay. And then there's that thing called the acceptable amount. How many acceptable amounts do you have until it becomes unacceptable? Mm -hmm. So if I turned around, ask people, if I turned around and my secret ingredient for the best chocolate cake was one tablespoon of boo-boo <laughs> and so do you want it well no nah, i will why not all the other ingredients are boo-boo too mm -hmm. and so when you turn around and you do this and it's like but i'm telling you it makes the flavor great but you really don't taste the boo-boo 
at some point you will start eating and it's like, well, then how many of these do you eat because till you end up with a pile of boo-boo? And that's how it is with the food. You just, you have what they call these acceptable amounts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they have acceptable amounts of dirt and insect parts for vegetables as well. And that's always fun. I think mushrooms are allowed to have like up to like a hundred insect parts per mushroom. You know, they, they don't tell you that. Um, and uh, yeah, acceptable amount of these toxins. That's one thing that people don't, don't talk about. You know, I mean, these, these, I mean, obviously I talk about plant toxins all the time and then people just say, you know, well, but just dose makes the poison. And um, the, the second part of that sentence is, and the dosage is something, right? You can't just say, well, dosage makes the poison, right? Okay, so what is it, right? You have to quantify that. You have to say that. Um, for cyanide, there is no acceptable uh, dose of cyanide, right? I mean, that's according to the WHO and the CDC. Uh, I tried to see um, somewhere. I told, I, I saw, I heard, I was speaking to someone and they said that they had found some a reference from the WHO that it was like 10 milligrams a day was like the maximum safe upper limit. Everything I looked on WHO and CDC basically said, no, there's, there is no safe amount of cyanide. Cyanide is just invariably harmful, even at low doses. And mm -hmm. can a long-term harm to your thy thyroid, cause goiters and cause neurological dysfunction, um, even at sublethal doses. Um, and so I didn't even find the 10 milligrams, but you know, uh, either way, you know, if it's 10 milligrams, it's not that much. And, and, um, uh, a, a serving of flaxseed, which a lot of people use because oh, it's so healthy. It has so much omega threes, which is, you know, it's wrong. Omega threes, it's not DHA or EPA, it's ALA. And so those are, and that doesn't do anything for your brain. Um, but Wait till I give you the story about flaxseed. Oh, yeah. um, so people are using a lot of flaxseed and, uh, because they want the, the, you know, the omega threes, but it also has tons of estrogen and it also has a lot of cyanide and one serving of, of flaxseed and some flaxseed can contain up to six milligrams of cyanide. And so that's close to that 10 milligrams, if that's the, the maximum dose. Um, but as little as 50 milligrams can kill you. Right. And so you know, like why, why are we saying that that's okay? Well, where's that warning label on almonds and on flaxseed and on uh, apples, you know, because if you don't remove the seed from the apples that has cyanide in it. And uh, there was a study that went around just looking at uh, wow. smoothie shops that, uh, and they're just testing the cyanide levels of these smoothies. And they were like, yeah, there's way too much cyanide in all of these things, especially ones that would use flaxseed or almond milk or whole apples where they didn't core them and take the seeds out. And they were like, yeah, no, this, this could actually cause, you know, uh, harm to people. And, you know, you don't, you don't see that. You don't see that label anywhere. If the WHO has said one of the two things, one, there is no uh, acceptable amount of cyanide that, that uh, people can safely eat or 10 milligrams is the safe, acceptable dose. Well, dose makes the poison. The dose is really damn small. And so, you know, since there are acceptable, or if there is an acceptable dose or is an unacceptable dose, why is that not on the, the package labeling? Why is it that cassava, which is very high in cyanide, um, is known to kill people and is the number one source of, of uh, calories for 750 million people in the tropics? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and they sell cassava chips. And uh, there's a product here called veggie chips here in Australia that are made from cassava and have tapioca flour, which is, you know, you're basically putting cyanide powder on cyanide. You know, and, mm. and there's actually a rash of people that got sick. I had a patient that got sick from having a handful of veggie chips and she went carnivore and she was very sick from this. And she looked mm. it up and she said, no, oh, damn, those veggie chips are made out of cassava. And she looked up if other people are other people in Australia getting sick. And she found out, yes, there was like a rash of people getting sick from uh, these veggie chips because apparently this batch had just a, like a, a, a mm. an extra high mm -hmm. amount of, of cyanide in it. And uh, where is it on that pack of veggie chips okay. that it says? Well, I have oh, something for you to add cyanide. to your arsenal. Yeah. Because I know this does not, first of all, you might not be on social media uh, just scrolling through TikToks. Mm -hmm. There's a trend right now for the flaxseed. Oh, you yeah. Take, I, I don't know if it's a cup and three cups of water and you boil that. Mm. Then you listen to me, you strain that and then the gel that it made, you take it and you put it across your face and it's supposed to uh, act like a Botox. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, really. You got like multiple people 
doing this, you, I, the jail, there was even a guy that did it. And then of course, immediately as soon as you rinse your face, the lines and stuff seem to disappear. Mm -hmm. Now it's not alone, but then I said, hold up. All you did was boil that. Do you know we're taking those flax seeds, putting it in, grinding it up in smoothies and mm -hmm. all of this other stuff. But when you just use it in its natural state, it's like a Botox for your skin. Mm. But we're putting that in our bodies and thinking that it is okay for your intestines. Well, how about it Botox your intestines? Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden thing, I'm telling you, look up flaxseed Botox and watch you see some of those TikToks and stuff jump up in regards to it. So if you want to use flax seeds, doggone it, boil it with some water, put it on your face and leave it out of your mouth. Yeah, that's it. Black seed. Well, that's it. And you know, there's some sort of time. I mean, Botox is a toxin, it's botulinum toxin, right? And that paralyzes these muscles, and that's what, what makes the, the the you know the wrinkles go away. Um, but you know, uh, but um, so yeah, this is like actually those, going out, and we're eating this. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, and, and you're putting this stuff on your face. It's paralyzing your face, and then you're eating this stuff, and um, and and you think that that's somehow a good idea. It's absolutely crazy to me that people are doing this, and and then saying dose makes the poison. What's the damn dose, right? If you hear someone say dose makes the poison, and they don't follow up with, and this is the dose, mm -hmm. they're an idiot, and they're they're okay. just a con artist, and you just have to you just have to call them out on it, and just be like, okay, and what's the dose? No, you have to say the dose. You can't just say dose is the poison. You're accepting that this is a poison. So what's the dose? You say it's a poison at a certain dose. What's the dose? And they say, well, well, you know, uh, oxygen at a certain dose is uh, is uh, toxic. It's like right, and we know that dose. So what dose is the cyanide acceptable? What dose are right. iso isothiocyanides acceptable? What dose is oxalate or oxalate acceptable, and so on? You have to say that. You can't just say dose makes the poison and then walk away as if, you know, with, with the, the unspoken suggestion that dose makes the poison and it's way too high uh, to, for us to worry about because that's not true. You know, if you haven't quantified that, if you don't know that, then you can't say that. And so you have to say, oh, oh well, this is the dose and you'd have to eat 50 pounds of spinach. Well, then fine. You know, then who, who gives right. a crap? But that's not the case. Because people right. have actually died from eating too many uh, oxalates and, and uh, lectins and oh, wow. other sorts of things, you know. So, yeah, there's a there was a rash of um, illnesses in Japan where they had this cooking show about making these beans, and it was just a certain recipe for making beans. And beans are very toxic. They have a lot of these lectins that that if you don't treat them right, you don't cook them right, you don't prepare them right, they can kill you. You know, mm. and um, or make you very sick anyway. If and if you get too much of them, make or really gassy. Oh, and that, yeah, exactly. And, um, <laughs> and so they, they had this cooking show and a lot of people tried to follow the recipe and a lot of people did it wrong. And thousands of people got sick and hundreds mm -hmm. of people had to go to the hospital because they got so sick. And uh, people have, you know, it's in the published literature that people have died from acute oxalate poisoning. Uh, Liam Hemsworth, the actor, put himself in the hospital with an acute uh, acute oxalate poisoning from having spinach smoothies every morning for three weeks. And he, hmm. yeah. And he had massive kidney stones and was very, very sick. And that's because he was just eating too much spinach. So we know the doses for some of these things and they don't say that, you know, and I used to blow mine up with spinach, but listen, yeah. uh, can I switch up a little bit. Can we talk about sex? Sure. <laughs> okay. So I've shared with you that I, I got up to 260 pounds and mm -hmm. I I love the fact that my husband, it, it, it didn't matter uh, the size or anything. And we're coming up on our 20 year anniversary and over our years, uh, we're when you average it out three to five times a week. Mm -hmm. But now carnivore mm -hmm. is doing two different things to our body. So we we even did a show on testosterone in regards to him because of how his had fallen. So hmm. and now that he's carnivore, 
it is on the rise. Nice. But now that I'm carnivore, and and it goes back to because how I feel that I have this reduced size stomach. That when I was putting any and everything in my pocket, in my mouth, I was chasing him around the house. It didn't matter how big I was. Now, on the other hand, what all of the women are feeling and, and all of this, I don't get it as often. But honey, when it comes, it's like I, I'm back to chasing him. So why or do you feel that like, I don't know, my stomach, how, how much I'm taking in or what I need to do because I want to keep chasing him because ladies, let me just say this. For the men, when you have a big stomach, first of all, and you look down, you don't see your penis. And a lot of your penis is up in your stomach. And then when you lose your penis, your stomach, your penis pop back out. And I'm sorry, that's just so true. But then like for, for us, where we're able now to do things that we've never been able to do during our marriage. Mm -hmm. Like um, you'll see on, I'll say on television, on television where like two people are facing each other, sitting on the bed, you can wrap your legs around him, that type of stuff, right? Cause mm -hmm. you don't have bellies in the way. So why would you not want this? The problem for me, Dr. Chafee, and let me know if it has to do with like the food, the amount, what do I need to increase or something? Because I, I'm not getting that I need to chase mm -hmm. him as often as I did before. But I'm looking better to him, honey. And he's really wanting to chase me. Mm -hmm. And now I'm running in the wrong direction. <laughs> so what? That's a good question. You know, normally okay. people actually get the other you know, they go go the other way where women would be get uh, and much did. more uh, increased libido, and that was that was actually that was that was a trend in the early 1800s that they started this vegetarian movement. In the early 1800s as part of the temperance movement. They encouraged women to eat vegetables, not eat meat, because they said it would give you carnal desires. It would give you you eat of the flesh, you'll think of the flesh, and this isn't good. And you want to suppress your lustful feelings because, of course, lust is a sin. And so they said, you know, you know, unmarried women don't eat meat. This is not good for you. This is not good to make you oof, want to go and have sex. And so really what it's doing is suppressing your hormones and making you unwell so that your body's saying, yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not healthy enough to have a baby. And like hmm. virtuous men would be encouraged to like, well, I'll go on a vegetarian diet to show you that I'm, I'm so virtuous. I'm such a good person. In fact, I, I was reading an old, um, uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle book, uh, who wrote the Shakespeare, no, it's not, not Shakespeare, um, Sherlock Holmes books. And he mm -hmm. wrote a book called, um, the, uh, the lost world was basically they go into, into South America and they find this, this step plateau where there's like dinosaurs are still up there and they've sort of stayed up there. And that's the only part of the world that they have them. And that was one of the things they were talking in, in the beginning of it, this guy was courting this woman and she wasn't really interested. He's like, well, what should I do? I can do this. I can do this. And I'll, I'll go vegetarian and show you all these sorts of things. So it was like, it was part of the culture there. As you, you, you show that you had true, pure intentions that you would go vegetarian to show that you'd suppress your lustful feelings and all these sorts of things. So it's, um, it's interesting that that happened because it's normally, normally the other way around and people get much more interested in sex because their, their, their bodies are telling them, Ooh, yep, you're ready to go you know, get going. And, um, you know, so it, it could be that this is, you know, just a bit, a bit of a, a timing issue, you know, if you get to a point where you know, your hormones are just going to naturally subside anyway, it could. No, 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 we, we, uh, -uh. No, no, I'm too young for that. So okay. I just want to, is it possible because of the amount that I'm eating that mm. I really, really need to eat more in regards to, and then too, and then too, that he's 60, but he lasts so much longer now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that might be brought up. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, that's going to be a whole workout. No, yeah. so, but. <laughs> well, it could be that yeah. Too. 
you know, well, you know, if you're not eating enough and your body's not, isn't, isn't getting, you know, the amount of food that it wants, you know, it may not be that you feel as healthy as you can. If you're not as healthy, if you're not feeling as healthy as you can and your hormones aren't being help, helped and optimized as much, you know, fat is, is, is very important. Cholesterol makes your hormones as what your hormones are made out of, you know, the other sort of thought, and I, I don't know, um, you let me know what you think. You know, he's lost a lot of weight too. You know, maybe you were more attracted to him when he was bigger. Maybe you're just into that sort of thing. I don't know. Have you, have you thought of yourself? Oh, let me like think of it. No, no. <laughs> this, I, wait a minute. No, because see, when you get chubby, then that means part of his penis was back in his stomach. Yes. So well, I like it. <laughs> the aesthetic though, you know, just the aesthetic. Wait yeah. a minute. Hmm. No, because now, you know, you guys start, uh, 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 doing the push-ups and all that other stuff. So mm -hmm. the body is the yeah it is. I think what it is is that longevity now. Okay. Yeah, that now instead of just going with the flow, it is. Oh, this is good. Wait a minute. I you know what I really I think talking to you I just figured that thing out. I am not kidding yeah. because prior to, yeah, chubby girl, I could. <laughs> I can, I can, yeah, I can pull multiple, I can do all kinds of things, but skinny girl is really getting a workout. <laughs> that might be what it is, Dr. Chafee. Now, I, mm -hmm. I think, I think we just cured it. I, I yeah. do. It is. Good. I'm going to have to tell him mm. that, uh, no, it's really you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's not me. It's you. That's, that's really no, that's yeah. yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> that is it. That is it. Yeah, thank you for uh, yeah. that part. Yeah, it is because it's like everybody, you know, certain topics people don't talk about, and then of course, across YouTube, you're trying to find the right verbiage. But I'm more, this is what I'm talking about right mm -hmm. here. It's like, um, because even with um, your body moisture is is like the word i'm looking for now uh yeah he's always said girl it's like you 16 years old but mm. and now i'm probably more like 25 years old i guess because that has even changed so mm. i have to find what this balance is mm. um and i don't have any more of my female parts due to fibroids mm. Uh, yeah, so that's another thing. I was placed into a, uh, is it Luprin? I want to say that might be the name of it. It was an injection I used to get every month that put you into like a menopause. It stopped your cycle and all these other things because mm -hmm. the fibroids in my uterus, they said my uterus was the size of a seven month pregnant woman. Wow. Yeah that I, I was having some and, and, uh, but I knew that my ovaries and I needed those hormones. So they took the cervix and the uterus the first time. And then I was, they said I was having endometriosis, but I'm like, that happens inside of the uterus and I no longer have one. So what did they say? Oh, some cells on the outside. So then they went in and took, the fallopian tubes and one of the ovaries i just kept trying to hold on mm. and then eventually another big cyst came back mm. and how they scare you is well we don't know if this will turn into cancer mm. and so so now you're sitting there and it's like well if i get it out then we got to worry about cancer but if i leave it then i got to come back never once if you change your diet, yeah. you know, that's where you're getting this stuff from. And it didn't happen like that. So then on the third surgery, and I'm like, well, doggone, I should have did this all at one time. It would not have had this issue. So, uh, yeah, I don't have those parts. So mm -hmm. all of these things come uh, into play. And a lot of females are being told they have to have these surgeries and stuff, but I once again believe it was related to the food that I was eating. That's where cysts mm -hmm. and all this other stuff is coming from, was coming from because mm -hmm. I don't have that issue anymore.
Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing, you know, uh, fibroids are, are uh, strongly associated with insulin resistance and, you know, people going on ketogenic diets can actually, you know, shrink their fibroids and reverse them. PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome is different causes of ovarian cysts, but, you know, this is, this is uh, just an issue that can also come, uh, come across from uh, insulin resistance. It can also disrupt the hormones in women as well, dramatically. So it, you know, women make testosterone first and then it can, gets converted into estrogen in the ovaries and uh, high insulin blocks the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. So you get too much testosterone, not enough estrogen. And obviously this will affect fertility, this will affect um, how your ovaries function. You can get polycystic ovarian. So if I no longer have those body parts, mm -hmm. what what's going on with me then? Is that why- uh, oh, Both your ovaries gone now? Gone. Right? Yeah. Um, do you take- uh, HRT, hormonal replacement or anything like that. Yeah. Mm -mm. Um, well, your adrenal still. I used to noise. have heart hot flashes and then they gave me this patch, mm -hmm. um, cause I had never experienced those. They gave me a patch and I weaned off the patch and I pretty, I don't have the, since I've been carnivore, which is 300 and not quite a year yet. I think May 26 will be a year for mm -hmm. us. Uh, and uh, yeah, since then I have not had like hot flashes to that, mm -hmm. throwing the covers off and all this other stuff. So, and yeah, but yeah. do you think that, yeah, the, the yeah. more we talk, we're coming up. I need, at the end of this, I need to go out there and chase him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that make y'all feel good. So yeah. we got to figure this out. We eat a burger yeah. and drink and eat some a stick of butter and go chase them. <laughs> Hey guys, just want to take a second to thank our sponsor at Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly, all you need to be healthy is to just eat meat. For those times that you're out hiking, road tripping, or stuck at work and you want a nutritious snack that is just meat, fat, and salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. So I like this product not because it's just pure meat, but also because I want the carnivore market to thrive as well. And the more we support meat-only products, the more meat-only products that will be available in the mainstream. So if this sounds like something you'd like to get behind, Behind. check it out using my discount code Anthony to get 10% off which also applies to subscriptions giving you 25% off total all right thanks guys yeah and the uh, well you know when you're when you're eating properly too you you benefit your your you support your adrenal function then your adrenals can actually make some of these hormones as well it's just okay. not to the extent that your ovaries would or in men the testicles would like boys will make testosterone and androgens um, but then when they go into puberty is when their testicles start becoming active and they start making more testosterone and uh, specifically dihydrotestosterone, DHT, which is much more active. And that really drives the puberty. And so, but your adrenals actually do quite a lot. And so even after menopause, as long as your adrenals are healthy because you're eating healthy, you can actually still have, um, uh, you, you won't be sort of symptomatic and feeling pretty rotten, but um, you know, just talking about the, um, you know, you and your husband with the, with the changes, uh, the, you know, the reason I sort of asked that is because I actually had, um, uh, experience with this. I had a, a f um, colleague of mine had a weight loss, had a weight loss clinic and he was helping this woman lose a lot of weight and she was, you know, had, had a lot of excess weight and, um, and she was losing weight steadily, 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 but then she was sort of getting a bit of friction from her husband. Her husband wasn't really being supportive wasn't really helping her stay, stick on her diet was sort of like, of course, well, why don't you have this little dessert? Oh, why are you eating that? And basically giving her a hard time for sticking to the plan. And so, you know, she was a bit frustrated with that. She didn't know, you know, why he was sort of sabotaging her. And um, so she was talking to my friend and who was her doctor and he said, okay, well, let, let's get him in here and let's all talk about it. And he reluctantly came in They sort of coaxed him in. And what it turned out to be, was that when she was at a certain weight, she had these little rolls sort of at her back right here that he really liked to play with while they were being intimate. And he just like really liked that. And when she got too skinny, they went away and it really, it really bothered him and it really sort of turned him off. And so that was it. That was why. And so he was really into that. He was, he was, he was very sexually attracted to her bigger body. And and she wanted. I do like my husband's girls. body bigger. Mm -hmm. I do. Now that you say that, it's like uh, to, but bigger was a belly. Mm -hmm. 
I mm. don't want the belly. Mm. So what he's doing it for me is wonderful because he's he buffing it up for me, which I like. But I had told him he has to get stronger so he can carry me around. Because mm -hmm. so you look at you, uh huh, mm -hmm. uh huh. But listen, now I have a question to ask you. Mm -hmm. And I only know how just to ask it. I all right. So because I asked this to my husband, and and I don't know because I'm not a guy. Mm -hmm. Do testicles drop? Because I know they talk about that um, in like dogs mm -hmm. uh, that they testicles drop. So there's something that goes on, I guess, with with you guys, you fellas, and coming over into your testosterone. Because I have a 14 year old grandson. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to ask him, hey, yeah, your balls drop. I'm not going to do that. So it's like, <laughs> I want to no, know because I'm going to tell him the more meat you eat right now, mm -hmm. this, this, this wonderful body that you want, that's going to be where you get it mm -hmm. from. But what is this thing? Uh, so is there something medical in regards to you guys that I don't know? The testes are up and then I was, I don't know. I want to know. I, every time I ask it, it's like, don't ask me that question. So yeah. I'm asking you, is it what, what goes yeah. on with you? Guys? Well, yeah, pre, pre, pre pubescent boys will, will have, you know, the scrotum sort of up and it just holds the, the testes close to the body. When okay. they start going into puberty and they start developing and they start making more sperm, they have to drop away because they need to be a bit cooler than body temperature. That's literally why they're hanging outside the body. So that's why you don't want to wear like whitey tighties. You're pulling them, sucking it in towards the body. And that Let's say that again, yeah. fellas. Yeah. No, but wait a minute. So you have the whitey tighties and that is the one, the little two-year-old drawers y'all be running around in. Yeah, but here's my question. So now they come up with the... Uh, like the Hanes, they're still out of the cotton material. They're just the boxer briefs. Mm -hmm. So is that, or should you just wear the boxers? Where because my grandson is in the boxer briefs. So is it yeah. better the boxers? Depends depends on how tight they are. You know, if they, if they're tight and restrictive and and pulling that up so it's not able to have some space, then uh, yeah, probably not a good idea. And, okay. um, so when that, that does sort of come down, that's a sign of, you know, going through pu puberty and, and, um, sexual maturity and the sperm is going to start being viable because it needs to be away from the body to get a bit away from the body heat. Uh, and that's, then that's generally coincides with the time when they start making more testosterone and dihydrotestosterone and 100% if he starts eating more meat and gets away from the carbs, because in women, high insulin gives you more testosterone and less estrogen in men, it's the opposite. And they, <gasps> and they both drop growth hormone for both men and women because high insulin blocks the action of growth hormone, makes it less effective in the body. And so you can get, uh, you make less growth hormone and it's less active. Growth hormone is what makes you grow. If you have a growth hormone tumor, when you're in puberty, you get gigantism. You get Andre the Giant, this big, you know, seven foot four, mm -hmm. you know, 900 pound dude. Um, because your body just grow, 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 grow. Or, you know, if you, after you finish growing, you acromegaly, where you're getting other weird sort of things growing on your body that, but the, but the growth plates are, are closed. So if you're, if you're stomping down your growth hormone, you're not going to grow as tall. You're not going to grow as big. You're not going to grow as strong. You're not going to be as, as well developed. You're not going to be as healthy. Um, if you're eating carbs before you go to bed, you're going to really screw this up because you're going to you're going to your major doses of growth hormone your body makes naturally is about two hours after you go to sleep, if you go to sleep on time. So if you're pushing yourself and you're going to sleep late and you're only getting a few hours of sleep, especially in adolescence when you're growing, you're completely screwing yourself. You are going, you're you are flat out going to be shorter than you would be otherwise. You're not going to grow as much as you would because you're you're damaging your growth hormone. You're not going to secrete as much growth hormone. Exercise is really important too. Do you have like a big leg day? Obviously, you don't want to hurt yourself, especially in adolescence. You don't want to overdo it. But if you, you know, work out and lift weights, you actually support growth hormone. You do sprinting, you do uh, resistance training to failure. You'll boost your testosterone and boost your growth hormone. In men, in women, it'll it'll boost growth hormone, and uh, and then obviously getting proper sleep, reducing stress. These are all going to improve growth hormone and hormonal health in general. 
I have patients that are, you know, in, in their teens, right. You know, 19, 20 years old and, uh, and old men, you know, their testosterone level is just bottomed out and they're just way too low. You know, if they, if they saw their normal doctor, they'd be like, oh, well, you're just in, you're not making enough testosterone and we need to put you on testosterone for the rest of your life, basically. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, wrong. You put them on a carnivore diet and, uh, it triples, you know, I mean, in, in a few months, I had one kid, his uh, free testosterone level, these are Australian numbers, was 120, which is way too low. His, his numbers should be, you know, closer to 900 at that at that age, right? Um, or at least, you know, above 600, 600 to 900, you know, for someone in their 20s. Uh, and a teenager, you know, would be would be even higher. So this kid was 19, it was 120, right? But that's not, that's that's wrong. You know, that his body's not developing properly at, with, a, with a testosterone level at that level. And so- I just put him on a carnivore diet. Two months, it was up above 400. You know, so it tripled mm -hmm. in two months and it's still going up, right? So that was a, that mm -hmm. initial boost. So, that, I mean, that's, it's completely rearranged this kid's entire future because he's going to, and he was you know, shorter stature, wasn't, he was, he was a skinny, shorter guy. Um, now he's actually, you know, if his, if his growth plates are still open, which they may be at 19, uh, he may actually start growing and, and grow taller and taller and actually get a lot more, bang for his buck but yeah absolutely 14 year old kid he's got got tons of growing to do he's got tr tons of of um development to do so if he just goes carnivore he's going to be taller his brain's going to be bigger he's going to be smarter he's going to be more athletic he's going to be more neurologically developed he's going to be more physically developed and muscularly developed he'll have a massive advantage over every single one of his peers he gets proper sleep he's like prioritizes sleep getting you know at least eight hours of sleep a night sleeping until it, he, he wakes up not having to wake up with an alarm. So going to bed early enough um, and cutting out all carbs and sugar and all that sort of crap. Um, alcohol, obviously, probably hopefully not drinking at 14, but, you know, cuts out all that stuff. I, I was, but you know, it's just the, but, um, you know, not, not often, but I, that's when I first got drunk was when I was 14. And, um, you know, hopefully he's not though. And if he cuts all that stuff out, I mean, he's going to, he's going to absolutely catapult his development. And as an athlete, he is, he is going to absolutely springboard over all of his peers. And hmm. I mean, this is, so, I mean, think about that. You have these people, like I've, um, people I've worked with and I've had on my podcast, you know, this guy like, uh, Ryan Talbot, who's an NCAA, uh, division one scholarship, uh, track star at, at, uh, Michigan state. Right. And he, and he runs the decathlon. He switched to carnivore. He wasn't feeling good. They did a bunch of blood tests. They said, yeah, everything's fine. He said, yeah, well, I don't feel fine. So, you know, something's wrong and you're just not seeing it. He found carnivore. He started going on it. He asked me sort of how to help him get going with it. So I did. And um, I had him on the podcast twice. You should show, you should show uh, your, your grandson these, Ryan Talbot, mm -hmm. two of these things. Um, he, T-A-L-B-O-T. And he, he had... Um, just switched to the, the decathlon and his performance just went crazy on the carnivore diet. And he's in his second decathlon ever. He won the big 10 championship. set mm. a school record at uh, Michigan state. And then he uh, was an all, earned all American uh, honors at the, at the nationals. Right. And the next year he got, um, he was doing even better. He ended up getting uh, second in the Big Ten that year and he got All-American again. He was selected for the Pan Am Games to represent the U.S. and got bronze in the Pan Am Games for America down in Chile just a few months ago. And he's been invited to trial for the Olympics, right? And that's just just going far away. He said it completely changed him. He said, it's just like, wow. absolutely changed. And he was, you know, he's in his early 20s, right? Imagine if he did that when he was 14, right? And he's saying that that as a, a fully grown adult, right, that this put turned him into the athlete that he had always wanted to become. And his testosterone, as mm. an already a D1 scholarship athlete, was 760. The mm. next year, 1150. Oh, wow. Right? So he's already a world-class athlete, and then he doubles his testosterone, Right. And it's not just going to be his testosterone naturally it's, too. naturally. Exactly. And yeah. all his other hormones are coming up naturally as well, because they're all going to be in balance. And in fact, the NCAA were just like, they're like, Oh, hold on a second. So they, they tested him random testing. 
And um, and he was fine. It was completely normal because they, they see you look at hormones coming from your pituitary to see if you're taking outside uh, hormones that are too much for your body. So you, you suppress the hormones coming from your pituitary and they, and they weren't suppressed. It was just totally normal. You're like, yeah, your body's just doing this. And I was like, well, awesome. Great. Well, good job. Yeah. Keep going. So, you know, you do that as as a 14 year old. Not only will you get those massive increases, I mean, you can you know, double your testosterone, triple your testosterone, but also your growth hormone and also all these other things that are going to improve your body, improve your outcome, uh, improve the outcome of your of your performance right now. But it's also going to change his development. He's going to be taller. He's going to be stronger. He's going to be more muscular. He's going to be um more neurologically intact. He's going to be faster. He's going to be more agile. He's going to be able to, he's just going to be more athletic in general. You know, the, his body will work better. And so hmm. it's actually, I get very excited when I hear about kids thinking about doing a carnivore diet, because it's like, it's, I, I wish that I had gotten to do that. You know, okay. I'd be six inches taller and 50 pounds heavier. And like, you know, be running like a four one forty. Like it'd just be, I'd just be killing people. You know, right. And, um, oh, he's I'm, I'm going to have him to watch uh, this portion of here. But since we're talking in regards to young people, one of the things that I also notice uh, from when I was in school to now, uh, this the new found word of the spectrum. Mm, yeah. And so uh, if those things having him to do uh carnivore and him feeling this way. And like you said, possibly taller and, and all of this great stuff. Cause he has a phenomenal body build. He, re he, he's already structured. Yeah. You've seen. Yeah. He, he, he has it Did that born naturally. As a matter of fact, uh, he can do a no hand back backfill. Yeah. No. Uh, this kid was riding a bike with no training wheels before the age of three. Yeah, wow. Yeah, because he went, he saw someone uh, teaching their daughter to ride. He watched them for like 15 minutes. And then he said he wanted to go home and get his bike. And then he asked his mom, take those uh, wheels off. And she looks and she did. And he taught it like not a good 10 minutes later. Hmm. He did, he, he hit that ground a few times. And then, bam, he just, he took off. That little wobble went, and mm -hmm. he wrote that thing. And I, I ended up uh, later on recording him because I thought that was something else, someone his size riding without training wheels. So I can't imagine what great things would take place in regards to him. But mm -hmm. I deal with a lot of students and stuff like that. And um, children on the spot. Spectrum. I have a really good friend. Uh, she just started carnivore in January. And right now uh, she's doing a transitional period for her son who's on the spectrum. Uh, he's 21 now. And so um, introducing more meat and less, you know, she got that idea from carnivore family. Uh, this lady has eight children and uh even her two-year-old is a carnivore and she talked about the process it took eight or nine months for the entire her and her husband right away uh before the kids they they did that you go shopping you buy more meat uh but they went i guess keto first mm -hmm. uh to that degree where they had you know some vegetables and so on on the sofa and before you know it they're just all meat now and everybody knows how to cook so that what do you think uh the formula the everything that is preventing some of the kids uh from progressing yeah well i think that it, it all comes down to proper nutrition. You know, we, we did not see these developmental issues prior to the radical change in our diet that happened sort of the circa late seventies and certainly not, you know, before the 20th century, we just didn't see these things. The, uh, the autism rates in the 1970s were about one in 10,000 in America. Now it's, it's, I think it's one in 34 children will have, uh, right now will have autism and one in 22 boys. 
I mean, what in God's name is that? You know, that that's that's five percent of humanity is going to now have autism in this next generation. That's that's the, the numbers that are coming out now. Uh, and when it was one in ten thousand before. So I mean, how are we saying that we just didn't notice that before? You know, this is a misdevelopment of the brain and the neurons, and that's that's a major, major issue, especially if it's if it's something that's that's preventable, something that's environmental. You're not eating the right thing. And so you're not getting the right nutrients to the brain, or you're you're eating something that's slowing down the development of the brain. That is completely preventable, and and we know it's preventable because it it came out of it, it sort of has been coming up. And they say, well, we probably just didn't notice it. It's probably really happening. No, that's bullshit. One in twenty two kids. That means that all of us in our classrooms, you know, would have one out of all those. You know, generally around twenty twenty five kids in a classroom. One of those kids would have been. Um, you know, severely autistic, you know, and the thing is, it's not like, oh, it's just a bit, it's just a touch. No, this is actually severely affecting people. And so, you know, it was, you know, we had those, you know, the special education classes, you know, when I was in school, I'm sure when you were there as mm -hmm. well, I mean, at my, my school with 1600 people, there were like maybe 10 kids in the, the special education class. So, you know, that's, that doesn't meet that, that uh, statistic right there. So <clears throat> it was less than that when I was in school. Yeah, I bet. You know, absolutely. And so, you know, this is, this is, unfortunately, it's a misdevelopment of the brain and misdevelopment of the neurons. It's strongly associated with nutrition. I found when I was looking at these sorts of things, and I was, I was asking, and I sort of thought about this, like, oh, hold on a second. Is, is autism part of this? Is this, as this part of these um, uh, health issues that are coming about from eating the wrong thing? And I looked at it and the rates of autism started going up at the exact same time. That all that the obesity and heart disease and cancer and diabetes and autism, Alzheimer's and autoimmune issues all started going up. They all started going up at the exact same time, sort of, you know, uh, in the sort of the 80s, 90s, 2000s, just started going up, 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 all of them at the same time. And um, they all started at the same time. They all started going up. And so you say, well, you know, maybe we just didn't notice that. But they said that in the 90s. Oh, maybe it's just, you know, under underdiagnosed. Okay, well, now you're now you're paying attention, right? So what about in the 2000s? Why did it go up? What about the 2010s? Why did it go up again? And now in the 2020s, it's even higher. So we just, we haven't been paying attention this whole time, even though we used that excuse back in the 90s. I don't think so. You know, that that's a complete cop out. And you're using, a, and you're, you're just making a cop out with children's brains and their development and their future. You're talking about a child that could grow up into be a completely self-sufficient, intelligent adult that can have their own family and their own life and lead a perfectly healthy and and natural life and and you're taking that away from them you're completely robbing them of that uh, when i was looking at this i said okay wow could autism be to, uh, connected with food and so i started looking into this i started asking questions and i started looking for uh, different studies and they found uh, strong associations with diet uh, one study looked at preconception diet and they found like these 14 foods that um that uh, lowered the risk of autism. If if mothers ate this, every single one was a red was like red meat or a red meat sort of product, uh, except one that's a broad category is fruits and vegetables, right? It's like okay, well that's healthy user bias. You're just eating sort of a more healthy, you're not eating as much processed junk food. All the other thirteen was like red meat products, right? Um, women that had higher uh, saturated fat intake during pregnancy had lower rates of children with autism, women that had higher LDL and total cholesterol during pregnancy had lower rates of kids with autism. Women who breastfed versus uh, formula uh, bottle fed, uh, it was specifically bottle fed, but people who bottle feed generally use formulas. Um, the people that, that breastfed versus bottle fed had much lower rates of kids with autism. And so there were a lot of these associations, but then there were other ones that actually showed uh, causative links between lack of uh, certain nutrients that are only found in meat, such as carnitine, which is an amino acid that only exists in, in meat. This is a carnitine, carnivore, right? So this is, this is coming from meat and uh, does not exist in plants. You can't get it from that. And, um, you know, people say, oh, well, but it's, it's a non-essential amino acid. You make it. No, only 70% of people make a sufficient amount of carnitine. And so for a full 30%, nearly a third of humanity, it is an essential nutrient. It's essential to get that from your diet. And so if you're not getting it from meat or you're not getting a sufficient supply and amount of it from meat because you're, you're limiting meat because I'm oh, meat's so bad, meat's so bad, 
Uh, no, it damn well isn't. It's the, first of all, it's what we're made out of, right? And second of all, it's what we have been eating since the dawn of humanity. Since human beings have been breathing air and drinking water, we've been eating meat as well. And we have not been eating plants uh, up until very recently. And so for fully one third of humanity, you have to eat meat to get enough carnitine. It is essential. And it's essential to the brain. It's essential to the neuronal development. You will not develop your neurons, your brain cells, your brain to a, a proper degree unless you get carnitine and you will get autism and uh, this specific kind of autism because you get a misdevelopment of the neurons and your brain doesn't work properly. And it has to do with the mitochondria. It has to do with the normal mitochondrial function in in your whole body but you know when it's in your brain obviously you're going to get a dysfunction of that organ it's just going to be very significant which is autism to greater or lesser extents depending on the deficiency of of the amount of carnitine so your mitochondria aren't working which means your brain isn't working your brain isn't able to develop properly and get this this form of autism there are published papers uh that that uh, and studies showing that a high fat meat-based ketogenic diet is, is an effective treatment and even cure for autism. You get it early enough. You know, if the brain's still developing, you can actually undo a lot of this, a lot of this damage and misdevelopment. You'll actually start developing properly. But even as adults, it actually helps dramatically because now it's it's helping the mitochondria function better. If you're on a ketogenic diet for you know, several months, then you'll end up having four times the number of mitochondria and they're four times as effective. And that's in your brain. Now your brain's working better. And there, and, and so even if there's a misdevelopment, the 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 neurons that you have are are now firing at optimal levels. Because we talked about insulin and how damaging that is uh, when you get it out of balance. Because when you eat sugar, your insulin goes up. And it's like, oh, okay, well, that's fine. It brings your sugar down. Well, no, it's not fine because insulin affects over a hundred different things in your body. And so if your insulin's at a five, then it's affecting everything at a five. You eat a bunch of sugar, goes up to 35, it's affecting everything at a 35. So that's out of balance. And then you start eating a lot of sugar, you start getting insulin resistance, and it starts going up to a five and an eight and a 10 and a 14. And I had a gentleman that came in to my office uh, two weeks ago, and he had a fasting insulin of 72. It should never be above nine, never be above nine. And his was 72, right? So, you know, that's, affecting everything at a 72 and then he eats and it goes up to 102 like who knows so insulin is very is very uh important um for all these different functions like i said one of the functions is uh autophagy this is why people say oh you need to fast for four or five days every few months so you can go through autophagy no you just need to stop eating damn carbs because if you don't eat carbs your insulin comes down insulin it, insulin suppresses autophagy. Insulin suppresses your body's ability to turn over different parts of your cells and uh, basically swap them out for, for new parts. So you can have autophagy without fasting? Yeah, 100%. So the main benefits of fasting is just you're not eating the wrong things that are causing harm and you're getting into this metabolic state that you're supposed to be in. And so, yeah, you go through autophagy just with your insulin's low because high insulin is what suppresses autophagy. So people say, oh, well, you have to you have to fast all these sorts of things. No, you don't. You just have to fast from carbs. You just have to stop eating carbohydrates. So carbohydrates actually cause a lot of, of harm to the body because of that, that you know, relationship with insulin, because insulin just completely rearranges all these over 100 different uh, biological processes in your body like autophagy. So yes, you absolutely get autophagy. So just being on a carnivore diet and not eating any carbs or fruit and honey and all that sort of stuff, you will always be going through autophagy. You will always be turning over these little parts of your cells like your mitochondria, which is why after, you know, you know, two, three months or sorry, three, four months on a corn, on a ketogenic diet, like a carnivore diet, a carnivore diet is a ketogenic diet then you'll get four times the number of mitochondria and they'll be four times as effective. So there are treatment groups right now that are treating kids with autism with ketogenic diets. Now we have to remember a ketogenic diet. What is a ketogenic diet? It means just no carbohydrates. So your insulin is low and that makes a big difference. But what kind of ketogenic diet? Because what do you replace the carbohydrates with? Fat and protein. Those are the other two energy sources, right? So where do you get that fat and protein? You could do it from plant plant foods, but it'd be very difficult to get enough energy and also, um, and also, um, <clears throat> to get enough energy, but also to get enough, uh, nutrients, right. 
And so uh, you don't. Uh, you, that none of these studies looking at ketogenic diets use a vegetarian ketogenic diet, right? So the ketogenic diet that is used in these studies, and there are literally thousands of studies on ketogenic diets, uh, are animal-based diets. So the most, it, and the ketogenic diet is the most rigorously studied diet on earth. It's the only study that's been studied with such rigor, with randomized controlled trials, with interventional trials, uh, experimental data showing cause and effect relationships. And it's always been a high fat meat based diet that has been shown to, to cause a massive, massive improvement in, in multiple different health outcomes like autism. So you're not only in ketosis, you're not only lowering your insulin and able to turn over your mitochondria and make more mitochondria and get your brain to develop better and not suppress all these other, um, all these other sorts of mechanisms throughout the body, but um, you are also eating a lot of meat and you're eating a lot of fat and you're getting a lot of carnitine and you're getting all these other nutrients that your body and your brain really, really need. So it's a massive, massive, massive improvement. It's something that I feel very strongly about because this is, this is something that doesn't need to exist. And these kids can be uh, very, very functional. They just be completely normal. And some of them can be, you know, brilliant. I've, um, I've seen this, you know, with, with, uh, people that have said that their kids were, um, nonverbal autistics, but only when mm -hmm. eating carbohydrates. And so they go over to grandma and grandpa's house and, and they sort of give them cookies and cakes and all that sort of stuff to, you know, it's always a treat to go, go to their house. Um, but then they come back and they can't speak for four days. Right. And then they get everybody on the same page. Like, Hey, you can't feed this kid anything except me. And now this kid has tested into the gifted program. Right. And that's a, that's a, and that's amazing. It's a complete turnaround. Someone who can't speak, can't function, can't talk, won't ever be able to leave the house, will be dependent their entire life. And now is in the gifted program and is going to have a very different life ahead of him. And, you know, that's absolutely amazing. It's, um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. And then, you know, you talked about formula. Formula is toxic. The stuff, it's, first of all, it, it's legally required to have seed oils in it, right? Seed oils are, are absolutely toxic to the brain. Right. And so in America, yeah, the, the formula, you look them up, they'll all have seed oils in it. They're uh, apparently required to, which I think is just absolutely shocking, but, um, they, uh, yeah. And they have a bunch of sugar as well. So they have sugar, they have seed oils. This is not what's supposed to be going into a baby's body or At their all. brain. Um, I was speaking to, um, a lady, uh, just over the weekend She's, um, you know, uh, of, of sort of Inuit descent. So First Nation people up in Canada. So she's up in Northern Canada, you know, of Native American descent, uh, descent. And, you know, in that, in that population, it's all about hunting. You know, they, they, they hunt and fish and do all that sort of stuff. And, you know, they normally just eat meat year round. And then now they fly in all this junk food and garbage and baby formula. And so now there is a rash of kids developing epilepsy and seizures and autism when they're weaned. So they start get, getting seizures when they're weaned. And I asked, I was just like, okay, well, that would make me sort of wonder what they're being weaned onto, right? Because we have a hundred years of evidence showing that ketogenic diets are a treatment for epilepsy. In fact, that was the treatment for epilepsy before pharmaceutical uh, interventions came into play. Wow. And yeah. Yeah. hundred years. We have a hundred years of data on that. And hmm. um yeah. And so now these kids up in Alaska, uh, or sorry, not Alaska, but Northern Canada are getting epilepsy, are getting seizures. I mean, it's a baby and the seizure is so detrimental. You can, you can, perm you can cause permanent brain damage or death from a seizure. This is a big deal. And so now these kids are all getting seizures after weaning, getting off their mother's breast milk, because apparently According to this lady I was speaking to, who's in the you know the First Nation um, community, she said that the Canadian government has required by law that kid that these Inuit kids, First Nation kids, are put onto formula after weaning. They have to be put onto formula, and now they're all getting they're all getting seizures and they got tons of sugar and seed oil. So you know their ethnic population, they've never been exposed to these plant toxins up until a hundred years ago or so, right? Whereas like, you know, uh, other people in other areas have had, had agriculture longer. And this is why you see sort of um, health disparities in uh, by population-based 
when eating, you know, plant foods and crap like that, right? You know, so you have the the Australian Aboriginals, they get much sicker when eating the same diet, much sicker. When I first came here, I was told day one that whatever the label on the on the the you know the patient file says, uh, add twenty years to that because they just age so much faster than everybody hmm. else. And so if you have someone in their thirties, you have to basically consider them as a geriatric uh, uh, patient. You know, they're just going to get the cancers and the heart disease and the lung disease and all these sorts of things that you have to sort of think about in someone who's in their sixties or seventies. Right. Um, and I think hmm. that is 100% just from the fact that they're just not able to deal with these plant toxins as, as well as other populations are. Um, that makes me think about Tourette's. Oh yeah, though, dude. There's so many people with Tourette's that, that are reversing that with a carnivore diet. All sorts of wow. like mental health issues, neurological issues are completely reversing these things. And um, Dr. Sean Baker had um, had a young girl on his podcast who she had just crippling Tourette's. It's gone now. It's completely gone. She has she has no sort of issue with that. And um, you know, with the autism, I did um, I did a, a talk on that. I, I, I sort of was doing a live. And I sort of went on a bit of a, of a, of a rant like this, uh, talking about that. And I was saying, hey, you know, if you've had experience with this, you know, comment below and, and say these sorts of things. And I sort of clipped that and I, I, I put that as, a, as its own video. I mean, the amount of comments that you see that were just, I mean, just so heartwarming. It was just like, it, I honestly... I it honestly brought would bring tears to your eyes to look at this. You know, yeah. um, people were saying that like, you know, their their daughter that was, you know, in her 30s and severely autistic, was nonverbal for her whole life, called her mom for the first time in 34 years. You know, I mean, like how incredible is that? You know, people having a tr major traumatic, I have a patient who has a daughter has a, had a major accident and um and had serious brain damage from this accident and she's she's blind she's deaf she's uh completely disabled she can't talk she just sort of you know screams and has problems but um uh now she's much more calm she relaxed she can actually navigate up and down stairs she comes in and and is is um you know much much different, you know, she's having, she's having a, a much different experience. And so, I mean, that's a huge difference. And this was, this was, you know, years and years and years of, of no improvement. Um, there was, um, there are a number what about of people that possibly have a, I, because see, as you're talking, I'm thinking of people, I met a lady, um, and me, sometimes I speak out of turn. I know that might seem shocked to some people, but what ended up happening, I saw her and she was just too young to be on a cane. And that's exactly yeah. what I said. You, I was like, because they were asking me about like how I lost weight. That was the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And then I was talking about, I said, yeah, that was great. But what it turned around for me mm -hmm. was the wonderful part. And then I looked at her and it's like, you wouldn't even have that cane. And yeah. she said, she looked at me and said, I had a stroke. I say, well, yeah. your recovery would be much faster. And then I left the room Yeah. <laughs> because I had to, but so then the question is, mm. what about people that have had uh, some significant <clears throat> reaction to the food because that's exactly what it is uh i've had people tell stories in regards to eczema i think of uh, my stepdaughter that they have given her so much medication uh creams and pills they did a some form of a chemo type procedure on her giving her this uh mm. stuff for the breakouts and but is it too late now if she just starts the diet? That's what I'm saying. So it for this person that uh, had a stroke, if you're eating right, so then possibly when you go for rehab, you're getting better results. No? No, oh, yeah, no, 100%. I mean, they, I mean, we've already, we already have studies on this with ketogenic diets. And, uh, you know, again, as like I said before, ketogenic diet, the ketogenic diets in these studies are meat-based, animal fat, animal-based diet. So it's carnivore diet with a side salad. So when everybody says, oh, you don't have any studies on carnivore, like uh, that's garbage. Of course we do. The most rigorously studied diet on earth is a keto, is the high fat, meat-based, whole food, animal-based 
ketogenic diet, right? So carnivore diet with a side salad, so carnivore light, right? And so that's right. the most the most um, rigorously studied diet on earth. It's one head to head with other diets, such as the DASH diet and so on. Um, and so there are already studies with traumatic brain injury showing that ketogenic diets vastly improve outcomes uh, with concussions as well. So if you are in ketosis, when you have a concussion, you will recover much better from it. It will completely reduce the neuroinflammation. You'll also get a lot more creatine uh, from the meat that you're eating. There's a lot of creatine in red meat, especially. And so, and that can absolutely help recover from brain injuries as well. Uh, they're actually starting to do, um, uh, treat uh, concussions and traumatic brain injuries with with uh, high dose, high doses of creatine, like 60 grams of, of creatine, which got quite a lot. Um, but you get a ton of this stuff. You get, you get, you know, five, 10 grams of creatine if you're, if you're only eating red meat. So the amount of cre the amount of red meat I eat, I'm probably getting you know, probably anywhere from five to 10 grams of creatine a day. I mean, this is what people load with. This is what they take, take as a supplement. Um, so yeah, you absolutely do that. I had um, a guy on my podcast, um, Dave Mack, who had a stroke 30 years ago when he was 19. He's 48 at the time of the interview. And he was weak down one side. And he was, you know, limping, very weak, couldn't go up and down stairs safely. Um, and uh, he had done keto, he had done Atkins at different times, very stable weakness that hadn't changed anything. Two months on a carnivore mm. diet and he's walking normally. His wife said like, you're not limping. Like what's going on? He's like, what really? Like film me. And so he's like filmed him. And he's like, just walking normally. He said, now he can run up and down stairs and the weakness on his right side. Well, it's not exactly equal to his left. Right, right, right. It's so mm -hmm. much better. And you wouldn't notice it. Right. So yeah, you can, I mean, it's not necessarily going to, going to re recover that lady's stroke, but he absolutely have, have amazing results with, um, neurological issues. I see it with pain all the time with uh, radiculopathy, with pain shooting down the you know legs or the arms, um, uh, migraines. I mean, that's been in the, the literature for a hundred years as well, that, that ketogenic diets help with migraines. Um, but you know, again, like with, you know, with the autism, I saw some amazing things. I had an interview with a guy named, um, Jonathan Griffith, and, uh, he's a bodybuilder in the UK, really nice guy. And, um, and, and, the, the subject of autism came up and, and he just said, uh, I actually have autism and you would not have guessed this, right? I, I had no idea. And, um, and he said, he's like, yeah. And, um, a year ago before I started doing carnivore, I would not have been able to have the conversation we're having right now. I would not have been able to. So even as an adult. So is it, is it at some point where you can say, I no longer, I mean, how is it? Because like blood pressure, you take your blood pressure, you're not on any medicine, you 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 now re reversed it. You reverse type two diabetes, uh, type one. I know I had a young lady that was working with me. Her insulin uh, dropped down like uh, twenty percent. She didn't. I mean, to twenty percent. She didn't even. She said, "I've never gone a day without having to give myself insulin," but my numbers were great. Uh, so I know there's a lot of things in regards to that. Mm -hmm. I forgot the question now. I got so yeah. excited. Well, yeah, about well, all so, the other well, but the thing is that, you know, it's, it, it's certainly improved his symptoms, right? And so it's going to improve the mitochondria. It's going to improve his neurons. It's going to improve the neuronal function. So he's, he's not going to get back the development that he lost, but his brain was developed enough that the mitochondria, now that they're working properly, he works properly. Right. So it's mm. um it obviously would be better if you caught it early and you developed probably all of we all would have been better if we were doing this from birth uh, we all would have developed very differently we all would have been much better off but um you know in that in that case it makes a, a bigger difference but you know there there's some pretty amazing comments so if people go and watch that that uh, that um clip that you know it's like 15 minutes long on autism where I sort of go through a lot of this stuff you go and, and what's his name so i want to find the clip well, the one, the, well, so Jonathan Griffith, uh, I, I did uh, a clip with, and that's what he was talking about. But the, um, but the one I was, um, I don't know the name. I just pu published it like a, a week or so ago or a couple of weeks ago, but anyway, it was, it was on autism and um, I'll see if I can find it. But if you look at the, if you look at the, um, if you look at the comments, it's pretty remarkable uh what oh, okay. these people would say so I, you know i talk about the i talk about the autism 
And, um, oh, there it is. So it's, uh, something like eating this food, uh, eating this food could improve autism. That's the name of it. And it was published on March 3rd. And so, and then the thumbnail says like diet and autism spectrum disorder. So if you look at the comments there, uh, and that's from a, a larger live, um, it's, it's pretty incredible. The, the comments are, are amazing. There's, and there was one that, that really stood out to me where this, this gentleman said, imagine living in a world of your own mind's creation and being happy there and, under, and understanding that world. And then one day deciding to only eat meat. Mm. And then after a while, you started to realize that the world that you had lived in and you had always known was not the real world. And the real world was very different and you didn't have social skills. You didn't have personal skills. You didn't have those relationships developed and you didn't have any job skills that could allow you to survive in that world. And he said, I don't have to, I don't have to imagine that that's, that's my reality. And I mean, you think about that. He was in, I mean, you just think about how his brain must've worked where he, he didn't really understand the world around him as it was. And all of a sudden his brain starts working and the, and the real world starts coalescing around him. That's an, I mean, that's the most remarkable recovery of neurological function that I've ever heard of in my entire life. Him describing that from the inside out is absolutely remarkable it's scary though, because he was just like, this is scary for me. And now I'm in this real world. And like, what the hell am I supposed to do? I'm not, I'm an adult now. And I, I haven't gone to school. I don't have any job skills. I don't have any interpersonal relationships. Like what the hell do I do? But then you saw the comments on that comment and it was, Hey, I was where you were three years ago. It gets better. You're going to be fine. And other people was like, like I've done this too. Like, it's okay. Just keep going. It was like, it was amazing. It was all these other people yeah. that had gone through that as well. And, um, you know, encouraging this, like, look, it's okay. You know, you'll learn this stuff. It's all right. You know, it, it'll be okay. That had to be scary. Um, incredibly scary. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, think of that recovery, what you could do as mm. an adult, as a kid. I, I mean, that's just, I mean, it, you, there won't be any deficit. You know, if you can hit it young enough as a kid, you know, it'll, you, you can, you can quite, quite literally reverse all developmental issues. Like it, they, like they were never there if you hit it young enough. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, now it feels like I'm interviewing you, but mm. let me ask this because you, you make a lot of references to like medical journal. There was a study that was, mm -hmm. so if this information is out there, help me understand when you go to the dialysis place or uh, for chemo, and I, I can I know I can speak for chemo because uh, we didn't find this diet in enough time, and my mother passed away a no. couple years ago. I'm sorry, but there they were giving her Insure yeah. uh, uh, apple juice. Uh, if you were really good, you can get a Sprite. Uh, graham crackers, uh, goldfish. And I know they do the same thing when you there for dialysis. <laughs> Why? And what are the steps that someone has to do the same way that you're saying that, that one place, but this is to kill them. Uh, mm. You have to give this baby formula with the seed oil and all this other stuff. How come no one is making this connection and banning those products in there? Do you know how many times I left with uh, uh, the vanilla insured, the plain insured that they ended up because it was, you know, they get it. They didn't mind giving it to me for free. So in my bag and it's like, you know, here I am with my mom and I had to cry through this where I'm like, my, you have to eat something here. We just drink this. Yeah. And that's what they have us at home doing. Yeah. It's going to take somebody to sue them or something mm. to expose this. So yeah, how is yeah. it that you know of these studies and then someone opens up a dialysis or kidney place or whatever, and they get to just serve whatever they want to have? Who's overseeing that? Because we mm. should know better. Well, because there's, there's no money behind a ketogenic diet. There's no product, you know, insure is a product and they can, they can donate that and they can donate money to these sorts of things. And they don't donate money to the, to the, to the product research. 
So, you know, you have you as a doctor, you learn in medical school and a lot of that is dictated by the pharmaceutical companies. They dictate a lot of the curriculum. And then as a residency, same thing. You're actually a lot of that's being dictated by the uh, pharmaceutical industry as well. And so that is, um, you know, it's, it's just you've got sort of that, you know, that corporate capture. You've got this capture of the of the medical system all, already. Um, but also then what do you get? your, your continuing medical education, you know, it's, it's, a, it's conferences that are sponsored by drug companies and food companies. Um, you have the diabetes association funded by, uh, Coca-Cola and Pepsi and Kellogg's and Nestle and all these other garbage, uh, sort of companies. And, uh, that's what's giving them millions of dollars because there's, it's, it's just part of their marketing budget. Right. And if they say that, oh yes, no, you, it's okay to have as much sugar as you want. You just need, uh, you know, to, to have, uh, the right dose of insulin for uh, a diabetic. That's what the, the American Diabetics Association says. You have as much carbs as you want. Just make sure you get enough insulin. Well, no, because when insulin is up, it's affecting over a hundred other things. It's not just affecting your blood sugar. So that's, that's causing harm. Right. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, of course the, the drug companies want you to eat, eat more carbs because you need more insulin that they sell. Right. And so they have the drug reps, they have these multi-billion dollar bu marketing budgets for, you know, drug reps and all these, and that's not even part of their marketing budget. That's what's part of their business model is these drug reps going to the hospital. And, you know, basically what you learn, you learn at, at these conferences that are funded by these drug cartels and you have them at, um, uh, at, uh, you know, Tuesday afternoon, you get a catered lunch, you know, the, uh, some drug rep that comes in the hospital has puts out this big spread of food and you all, you're always starving as a doctor and you're just always just, Oh, thank God. You know, there's food there. And, uh, and they come in, they have this little thing. Oh, there's a new study is showing that this or blah, blah, blah. So good. It's like, Oh, okay. All right. Great. Yeah. Thanks. And that's all you're getting and you're not getting the other side of it. So it's product placement, you know? And so there's no, there's no, multi-billion dollar um marketing budget behind a ketogenic diet it's just it just works you know it's just something that people that are studying independently and so there's no the, the people aren't spending millions of dollars billions of dollars getting this to the doctors but the pharmaceutical companies and the food companies are spending billions of dollars getting this to the doctor because that's part of their sales force. That's part of their sales technique is to get this in front of doctors. So this is something that we have to do ourselves. This is something that we have to do from the grassroots movement as doctors, as patients. And we just have to understand that this is, this is what the data shows and you try it yourself. And if it works great, if it doesn't work, do something else. It doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt you. Right. But it is the most rigorously studied diet on earth. And it does have the most so, uh, studies out there of, of high level. And, um, and so, you know, the data is there and it is going to work for you. If you do, if you eat a biologically appropriate diet, your body is going to improve. You are going to improve your health. It's, it is just that simple. It's just that simple. So let me just see how I break it down. So mm -hmm. ladies, because I told you, Dr. Chafe, take care of all the men, ladies, if you need your hair done and you walk into a salon and there's a ball patch in the uh, stylist hair or her, her do is just flipped all over. You're not sitting in her chair. So when you go and see these doctors and they are flowing over the seats, go ahead and do this right here real quick, Dr. Chafee. If they don't have one of those right there, find you another doctor. It's like, I, I love my doctor. Uh, I remember her having, um, when she went keto, she was actually having meetings once a week at 6 p.m. at the office teaching others. But, oh. and, okay, so if she see this part, then oh well. But you got away from that because your weight has picked back up. Well, now I've come in with the carnivore diet mm -hmm. and what ended up happening, which led to the blood work, because my blood work has always been great, uh, being big and, and all of that, according to that sad diet, I had excellent cholesterol. Everybody number was in the place. But when I did that, uh, what is it? HDL and the triglyceride, one of those, I was at 2.53, my metabolic ratio. And now I, I, I had sent you the uh, number uh, in September. September of last year, I was down to 1.53. And then I just had blood work in February and I'm at 1.52. Mm -hmm. Now, metabolic, uh, that 
little thing. I don't be remembering everything. So if with her, I told her that you can't put me on a stat and you can't do any of that. We're going to ride this thing out and you get to constantly see, because far as I'm concerned, my numbers have gotten better because I think my total was like 291 and now it's 283. And so if I decide to do it again, I can see them balancing out and doing what it needs to do. But we have to be more uh, selective over our doctors, ladies, that we do. Uh, if, if old girl hair is doing this, don't sit in her chair and then think your hair is going to do this. So if the doctor, uh, uh, you go in to see the therapist and they 300 pounds, they eat and they feelings and, and they're mm. not doing anything about their sales. So if Dr. Chafee now is, uh, the, uh, specimen that we're looking at, and if they can't hold a candle to him, you need to teach him, stop, stop doing it, walk away. Well, if you go in a restaurant and there's bad service, you know, you have the choice to leave, leave. And we have to start doing doctors the same way, asking them um, what they know about this. Expand. I told my doctor, ironically, when we interviewed you, because mm -hmm. it was morning here, that's one of the things she had her cell phone. She said, girl, next thing I see, I saw you on there interviewing uh I think you said it was a doctor. I said, yeah, you need to go listen to that interview because I'm not getting on a statin. I'm not getting on any of those things. That's just one of the medical doctors. So I'm not over here trying a diet that is a fad, a person, none of that. There are actual medical professionals who are living this way and are teaching us. So that's what works for me. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and that's the main thing. It doesn't matter what a study says. It matters what happens in your life. And if you get healthy and you're improving your, your medical outcomes, that's, that's it. You know, I, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see, well, I don't even check people's cholesterol anymore. I think it's a, it's a waste of time and money, you know, because it was just a scapegoat from the sugar. It was invented by the sugar companies as a scapegoat for sugar. And it's just to take the blame off sugar. And so, you know, we have their memo saying this, and that's published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, 2016. So, you know, it's just, um, it was a fraud then, it's a fraud now. Um, mm -hmm. uh, large population studies have shown that higher total cholesterol and higher LDL cholesterol is actually associated with longer life. You live longer if you have higher cholesterol. And it's more important to look at your HDL and your triglycerides and your, tri your HDL is in a good range and your triglycerides are in a good range. So that you're in a good range. It's also important to, to um, test your cholesterol in similar times and similar conditions, because if you exercise, uh, depending on the last time you exercise, that's going to change your uh, cholesterol. If you've had sex the morning of or the day before, it will change your cholesterol. If you fast for 12 hours instead of 10 hours or 14 hours, it's going you're going to have different results. You know, if you get it first thing in the morning, you're going to have different results. And if you get it, you know, at 10 o'clock in the morning or noon. All these sorts of things matter. They completely change. And so it's just, it's a completely useless test. And even if we could get your sort of accurate depiction of what it was by getting it first thing in the morning, fasting from 9 p.m. the night before, only water after that, at least two glasses of water in the morning, no exercise, sex, or stress the morning of day before or two days preceding, um, and no medications or anything else like that until after your test. All those things should be done anyway. If anyone's getting tests, that's always the way you should take your test because all these things matter. Uh, biotin, you take a B vitamin, you know, that can change your, your tests and your hormones and all these sorts of things. You have to stop those for three days before you get a test. I mean, it's so temperamental, right? Um, that that we're just, we're, 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 we're literally changing the course of people's lives saying, oh, you need to be on this medication for life based on this flippant, test that's just is just completely useless if you took your if you took your cortisol 10 times in the day you'd have 10 different results you know it's oh, wow. completely useless and so you try to do it in that controlled fashion where you sort of the same time same fasting period same hydration status same exercise and all that sort of stuff and and at least then you get a bit more consistent results but at the end of the day cholesterol never caused heart disease that was complete that was a complete fiction by the sugar companies. And we have hard evidence of that. We have their own documents saying it, right? So this is, this is a complete fiction. And I think we just, we just uh, ignore it. I don't test it in my patients. I don't test it in myself. Um, I, I just think- My husband heard you when you 
said that uh, you might have said that in because I was asking. We talked about cholesterol in our when we interviewed you, and one of the things that's what you said is that it should be the same, you know, before testing. But mm-hmm. ironically, we had sex the night before. Mm-hmm. I got my blood work, and you know that's the part he remembered. Mm-hmm. You, he said, you know, Doctor Chafee said that whatever you did now for all your other future work. Uh, <laughs> now you have to do this. Yeah, now you have yeah, to do yeah. It. We, we got to do it the night before. <laughs> there to, to stay consistent. We got to do yeah. it the night before. You you don't eat. Uh, now the one thing I didn't do was the two glasses of water, because uh, I was actually listening mm. when you said that. So I can get uh, those numbers and I prefer to go first thing in the morning. Uh, there's no line. So yeah, 730, okay. 8 o'clock, I go get it, get yeah. it done and come home and do whatever I want to do. I, you pretty much have touched on um, everything that I know I wanted from you on this one. I don't know if you had some additional questions because I just felt like yeah. this was our time. This no, was I, our time. Yeah. No, I, I, oh, I think that was great. Um, I, yeah, no, I think that was, that was everything I wanted to talk to you as well. So, uh, Zell, thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, it was a great conversation. It actually, time flew. I didn't even realize we'd been here for two hours, but it uh, was absolutely great. Thank you so much for coming on and please tell everybody where they can find you and see, see more of your stuff. Oh, well, thank you. So let me just say Mondays, uh, everything I'm telling you is uh, Eastern Standard Time. I'm here uh, in North Carolina on Mondays at 7 p.m. I'm on a panel with a group of lady. One, uh, uh, we have a nurse, we have a grandma, we have a mom of eight, and uh, our uh, young lady who went back to work, but we still play uh, uh, recordings from her and also with myself. And this was just, we're just ladies on this journey talking about different things. And we pull up some great stuff. The last Monday of the month, we have a cooking show. Three of us was cooking at the same time. We were having a cook off this last Monday. Uh, We do giveaways and stuff like that. And I am starting a show on Wednesday. Another young lady that had the gastric bypass surgery, we are uh, on a mission to prevent people from having this surgery. Yeah, That is like our biggest thing. And I, I've ran across people that didn't have channels that didn't mind like one or two shows. I will bring them on, but this young lady just started on YouTube um, and I'm really looking forward to that audience so we can help uh, people not, uh, have the surgery. And then the last Friday of every month I do, let me change my voice. Carnivores after dark. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So that's my biggest one. Uh, and it's nurse Laura and I that are doing that show together where, um, She's been a nurse over 20 years. As a matter of fact, she just interviewed with Dr. Baker. And I believe that one just right. aired. Nice. Uh, yeah. So, and um, so we get a little bit of medical and then we get me that just mm-hmm. says whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then my husband and I, we're going to pick back up because he didn't get away from recording with me. And I said, mm-hmm. no, this is hanging with the Browns with the S, sir. Yeah. So we'll bring him back on. And we're transparent. I answer questions. I figure you don't have a heaven or hell to put me in. And, you know, I just try to find my words to not get kicked off of YouTube. (laughs) Outside of that, nothing is off, uh, you know, off the table with me because I have, if you weigh 700 pounds, I want to know how are you wiping your butt when you go to the toilet? I want to know stuff like that. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, so those. Well, yeah. Well, I, yeah, yeah, it's, so it, it's, how- yeah, it's hard. No, I've you know, seen patients like that and they, they generally have to, they need help. And then sometimes they need, you know, like showers or even hoses and things like that. And it was a very sad story. There was a patient of a colleague of mine and she was very, very overweight. And uh, she actually asked if he would do a, ho- a house call. And he was just like, oh, I don't, I don't really do those. You have to some, come in the clinic. Um, and, and he saw when she came in, why she was very, very overweight and it was very difficult for Mm -hmm. her to get around. And she said that the, um, 
it was difficult when she went to the bathroom, she, she could not clean herself. And they had a system with her husband where they basically had a hose out in the yard where it helped, you know, clean herself, uh, because she just couldn't, um, couldn't wash herself properly. It was really, really sad. So, uh, it's, I, mean, oh, I, 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 I know. And it's, it's a reality. My husband and I, we take cruises and I'm, this is me. If we walk, we get up early and we're walking around the ship and I see an overweight person sitting in the jacuzzi. Mm -hmm. I say that's they bad. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's where my mind goes because I know what the cabin looks like. I know that space. And this is a, a, a way for you to, you. I mean, you might not be in there scrubbing, but for water to get mm -hmm. over you or one of the open uh, things. And so I, I'm a curious person about certain things. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I want to know either you answer it or you don't. You know, mm -hmm. I've asked people all kind of questions. I mm -hmm. do. It's just me. I know. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. It's been me my entire life. And I've enjoyed <laughs> this because you answer um and I know you're not a girl, but you are a doctor, but doctors don't, I, for lack of a better word, you don't know everything. So mm -hmm. meaning Definitely. you did a specialty in some areas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, up to hoo-ha, you might not have, you know about them, but you mm -hmm. know, that was not what you studied in school. You studied on your own mm -hmm. <laughs> with them. So yeah, I mean, there you are. Absolutely. And Hopefully. I think I made you blush a few times I on here. So that's going to be, that's going to be worth the replay <laughs> itself. So thank you so yeah. much for um, doing this. And uh, yeah. a lot of what we've talked about is going to help me in my personal life. Mm -hmm. It's going to help um, because I strategically try to bring up some topics. Like for instance, I talked about the young lady where her son is on the spectrum at 21, so on and so forth, because I, I always want to help lead someone somewhere. I don't have the answer, mm -hmm. but if I can lead you to the place. Uh, so I, I, I enjoy talking about the females, my sex life. Um, I'm just going to have to set the clock for more meat and fat so I can start chasing him. Um, the ADHD, uh, the spectrum, um, we, my blood work, you know, you even told me about balls dropping. So I'm in there. Yeah, I think we, I think we covered everything at that point. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so I don't know, maybe the viewers have a question, uh, hanging with the Browns. That's mm -hmm. so easy. Hanging with the Browns. I didn't name it something carnivore. Because you literally hang with us. You hang with mm. us when we go on vacation. We show you how we are incorporating this lifestyle in our everyday. When I'm on the panel with the ladies, we do challenges. Last week was supposed to be wall Pilates. And I realized that I got so much junk up on my walls. I ain't have a wall to Pilates on. So mm. that didn't work. So I, that's what gave me the uh, courage to fix a room uh, for working out. So I found my spot. Uh, we did the lion challenge, uh, Dr. Chafee. And I will tell you that I am not interested in, um, that. Okay. <laughs> and, that, and I'm gonna tell you why. At first I was feeling really bad. My stomach was tore up and I was like, Oh my God, I got enough issues on my own. Mm. And then, uh, I don't get hungry. So I have to really want what I'm eating hmm. and doggone it. It got, and it, it, I don't know. I don't know. And then my back started hurting and I'm like, how am I eating right? And my back is hurting. But then I understood I was getting even more purities, uh, impurities out of me, hmm. but I was willing to, I said, look here, I'm already doing just meat. And I'm good with that. So I did uh, the month of February. And then uh, I think I had some salmon or something. It was just to have something different mm. versus that. So kudos to you and that steak every day. It is, And I think if I could hold more food at one sitting, that I would do that. But because I don't and I can't, mm -mm, mm. give me a a shrimp here, a bacon there, and so on, and, and we put it all together and make a meal. So yeah. 
No, that's all right. All I right. know you got other stuff. I know you do. I know you do. So that's all good. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. And I'll put all your contacts below. And um, yeah. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining. If you think yeah. this is something that uh, you that someone would uh, find useful or helpful, please do send it along and then leave a comment below about uh, the different things we talked about and how that affected you as well, because it always helps people to see uh, what um, what other people have to say, just like all those con comments on the autism uh, channel, that uh, is something that may was very meaningful to a lot of people. So it does make a difference. And thank you all for joining. We'll see you next time. Yes. Hey guys, thank you very much for taking the time out to listen to what I had to say. If you like it, then please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and podcast. And if you're on YouTube, then please hit that little bell and subscribe. And that'll let you know anytime I have a new video out, which should be every week, if not more. And if you could share this with your friends, that would help me get the word out and let me know that you like what I'm doing. Thanks again, guys.